Machine. Hey, what's up with it, y'all? Welcome to my podcast, Cold Narratives. I'm your host, Iceberg Green. About to let y'all hear some of these cold narratives. Check it out. Hey, how everybody doing out there? First off, I want to say rest in peace to those U.S. troops uh, that was killed in Jordan in that drone attack. Uh, Sergeant uh, William Rivers, SPC Kennedy Sanders, and SPC Brianna Moffett. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If not, excuse me. Um, I want to send my condolences to them for fighting for their country, and my heart goes out to them and their family. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, make this solely about those black soldiers in Jordan, black American soldiers that fought for their country. Um, I'm not going to make this totally about um, a black issue. What I'm going to say is we do fight for our country. This is an example of that. Black Americans have always fought for the United States of America since um, the First World War, Civil War, World War II. Um, every last one of them, Confederate War, every last one of them, black people have had their hands, their bodies, and their souls and risked their lives for this country. And for us to be going through the things we are, it makes no sense. Um, a lot of these immigrants coming here, they getting food stamps, they getting everything, they getting bread off the dribble um, of our taxpayers' money. You know, um, and that to me, it just doesn't make sense. And you're steadily increasing our interest rates, you're steadily doing things, and we get a bunch of symbolic gestures. You notice when um, they want some, uh, you see them on the news at this church, you can do and see them at the cookout talking about Biden and Kamala. And their little uh, boule crowd. Um, they come out when they want something from us. But the thing is, they'll want something from us, but they never give anything back. They don't. They don't. We've been asking for tangibles. And you notice in the media, they do not talk about reparations. They That's one thing. They'll say, oh, we need equality. We need this. We need that. But they're not going to say black people need reparations. That's one thing they don't say. And it's crazy how, <clears throat> excuse me, it's crazy for black people, when we make it about us, we're considered uh, racist and all this different stuff when we focus solely on ourselves, That's crazy, huh? How they can make laws spe uh, specifically for other groups. Um, but as soon as we say, hey, we need a law for us, a black hate crime bill. Um, nah, y'all don't need that. Even though we're the most hated group in America, the stats say it. You all know that. And they'll do this to us consistently. They've been doing it for a very, very, very long time. And now we're losing um, soldiers um, at war fighting for their country. And I put this um, thumbnail up because we got Kamala's and the Bidens hiding behind white supremacy. They pretend like they want um, black people to have their due diligence. They don't. They hide behind white supremacy. And they actually have the same agenda. It just looks different. Okay, so this content is from CNN. Um, they're talking about these white supremacists that feel like uh, this world is theirs, like America is theirs. It was made for them. Um, and that's what this segment is about. But uh, check this content out and I'll be back. Patriot Front, a white supremacy group that believes their ancestors conquered America and bequeathed it to them and no one else, marched along the National Mall in downtown Washington, D.C. The police escorted members throughout the city when one cyclist did this. Wear Walmart khakis. Get a life. No one likes no you. Memory of America to Your continue. mom hates you. No history. I, I do. I do want to ask you though about seeing this scene. These are white nationalists, white supremacists, um, who believe this country belongs to them and them only, and only to people of European descent. What did you think when you saw this group with with no one else there to sort of say, "Hey, this is not cool." Well, they snuck into the city without telling anyone, and they've done this before. They sneak into the city, no notice, except for the police, obviously, and they march around for like 20 minutes and leave to get their photo ops. And that's why there's never been people counter-protesting them. Okay, so this content is from uh, MSNBC, uh, talking about a white supremacist group, the Boogly Boys, I guess that's the name. It's... <sighs> but this is a group that feel entitled to America, felt like it was made for them made in America. You, but this is, check this content out and I'll be back to break it down. That there are record numbers of, uh, of uh, hate, race-based, uh, anti-gay, anti-Semitic uh, incidents and propaganda distribution of flyers by organized groups out there. Then we come across intelligence reported by Vice News 
just this week that the Boogaloo Boys, who we thought really had been suppressed by FBI efforts after one of the Boogaloo Boys killed two law enforcement officers, this heavily armed, violent, in, uh, insurrectionist group, anti-government group, now looks like it's been on Facebook for quite some time in subgroups that are planning violence, even teaching sniper training, um, how to construct ghost guns that can't be detected, and lots of rhetoric about the search on Mar-a-Lago, anti-government, we're going to war, even reports that Boogaloo Boys have been in Ukraine learning how to fight to come back to the streets of America. Now, combine that with the upcoming potentially tense presidential election, um, potentially indictments of former President Donald Trump, and we're looking at the potential for violence on the streets, particularly from the Boogaloo Boys. Okay, so that right there is an example of an extremist group, a few of them that exist in, they roam in Facebook, they roam in all these different platforms, TikTok, with that rhetoric, um, and you know what they pushing, the agenda that they're pushing, they're getting ready for whatever, you know, the thing about it is, you, you know, you, we see them getting ready, but we wonder what are they getting ready for, more than likely it's something that they got up their sleeves. Why would someone go through all this hard work of hating someone? This it takes a lot of hard work to hate someone for this long, um, and they had they've been at it for years. I'm talking about they and it, they ramping it up, and people are starting to see that. You know, us as Black Americans, we have always been the undercard, and we've done the most most work for this country. You could talk about the evolution of technology and all that. That was on a computer. We put in manual labor. For this country we work with our back sweat tears lives to build this country it wasn't on no computer desk this was manual labor and it took that to build this country and it was built on a black oh, excuse me on the back of black people this country was built on the back of black people and i'm sure a lot of people understand that if you think about economics if you think about how uh this world was constructed how uh uh, the Constitution works, how the government entities work, how the media works. You can see how this was all systematically uh, systematically put in place. We can all see how this was systematically put in place. And who do you think it was put in place for? In America. Yeah, it was put in place for black people, black Americans, because they know we are the foundation. You can say what you want. But a lot of people know the truth, you know, and uh, I'm not saying that like, oh, we just we're, we're, you know, we did everything. We did the most significant things that counted in this world in uh, the United States of America. Uh, everything you can think of manual labor, man. We was at it for the United States of America. We put in work for the United States of America, manual labor for the United States of America. When it started, we put in work, y'all manually. <clears throat> manually we built this country <clears throat> man this is choking me up we built this country manually okay so I was in the middle of uh, doing this podcast when this news broke and I just want to say to uh, my black people in America we already dealing with a lot now um, we're becoming contrabands of war again um, I hope they uh, fight for these soldiers uh, like they would fight for any other soldier um, this is serious to me, and I'm sure a lot of my black people are hurting because of this. Um, and like I said, you know, I hope they fight for these black soldiers like they would fight for, fight for any other soldier um, in the U.S. Army, Navy, um, <clears throat> whatever the case may be. I want to thank you all for tuning in. I also want to say God bless those going through the struggle. And make sure you watch out for them cold narratives that the government trying to push on us, y'all. And to all my black people, I will be nothing without y'all. God bless you all.